After you leave off your sample, you're likely wondering what happens next. I'm sure you'll be glad to know that scientists get right to work finding out just what your algae is capable of. Testing your algae. But first, before anything can be done with the samples, it's important that the workspace be completely free of contamination. That means that the algae must only be manipulated when the scientist is wearing gloves and the work area is sealed off from the outside air. Alcohol is also used to sterilize the environment inside the protected hood. Earlier, a plate had been prepared to transfer the algae sample to. To create this, a gel-like substance called agar media has been put into each plate. This substance mimics a freshwater environment, which makes the algae comfortable and encourages them to multiply. A portion of your water sample is taken out of the collector and smeared across the plate. The plate is clearly labeled, then sealed with tape to make sure that no contaminants from the outside air get inside. Your algae sample is the only thing we want growing in here. Your algae will spend the next few days living under a grow lamp while they populate. Now comes a bit of waiting. This grow lamp mimics sunlight by giving off the correct wavelength for photosynthesis to take place. Since these algae need to make their own food from the sun, they would starve if they did not have a special light like this. After a few days go by, colonies of algae will be visible inside the plate. Four of the most different looking groups will be picked out for further study. The four colonies going into the next phase will be put onto a plate that has been divided into four segments to keep the population separate. Now, this plate will go under the grow lamp for another few days, then get to leave the plates for a liquid culture tube. Like the plates, the liquid inside these tubes is just like the freshwater environment the algae are comfortable in. And, once again in a sterile environment, each colony of algae will be put into its own tube. A foam plug is put into each end of the tube to filter out particles while still allowing air in. Each tube is labeled. Your algae spends another few days under the grow lamp, this time on something called a shaker. This machine may look funny, but it's actually a very helpful instrument. When it moves the culture around, it allows more carbon dioxide to dissolve in the water, which equals more food for the algae. The more food for the algae, the more the algae reproduce. There are thousands of species of algae, and they are organized using several different characteristics. One way to distinguish the different types is by their shape. Some possible shapes are round, rod-shaped, or crystal-like. The scientists will also determine if the algae have flagella or cilia. This is where a picture will be taken of your algae and sent to you. If it's determined that the species has not been studied yet, it will move on to the most exciting step, seeing how good your algae is at producing fuel. A sample will be taken from the tube. This will be the control. A control is used so that it's always possible to go back and see what the sample was like before anything was done to it. Now glucose will be added to the mix. This is simply sugar, or even more simply, food. After this happens, the entire sample is covered with foil to make sure the algae is producing oil through the use of the glucose, not the light. The ability to do this is an important characteristic of the ideal algae species. The algae gets some time to eat. And then another sample is taken out. Now this sample is taken to the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center. Here's where you'll find out just how much oil your algae produce. The algae samples are given a special red dye called Nile Red Dye. This dye will stay in the oil droplets red. Therefore, the redder the sample gets, the more oil it is produced. You might think that measuring the amount of color in something could be done by looking at it, but actually, an instrument called a spectrofluorometer is used. If your sample has made a lot of oil, then there's a chance it could be useful as the next great biofuel. So, there you have it, folks. By just taking the time to collect a sample of algae, you could bring the promise of an alternative source of energy much closer to reality.